Well, you know, it's it's good to be here in, in such a prominent club and um, institute and celebrating its 40th uh, anniversary and to be able to discuss what's attractive about Indiana and what attracts us to come back to France again and again and again. I'm in my third year as governor and this will be my third trip. Um, and, and we do so first and foremost to say thank you. We don't take investors in our state and our people and our communities for granted. And we have over 48 French companies that are growing roots in, um, in, in Indiana soil. And they employ over 28,000, about 28,500 to be exact Hoosiers. And so we want to say thank you. And we'll continue to do that. And this has just been an annual tradition as it's turned out. We also have made it a habit to have a presence at the Paris Air Show. Uh, and then we also get to um, incorporate government to government meetings in addition to those business to business um, collaborations. And so it's easy to sell the Indiana story because it's a success story. And we're, you know, we rank number one in the Midwest in so many of the most important categories when you're talking about investment. Um, top five in the nation in terms of a very attractive tax and regulatory climate, a low cost of doing business, low cost of living, connected to not just the rest of the country, being the heart of the heartland in the middle, so to speak, the core, we are also connected to the shore and then to the world marketplace. And we've done um, a, a, a yeoman's job just methodically year after year after year, always taking it to the next level and creating this what I consider to be the best opportunity in America to grow, whether it's as an individual or as a family or a business or a community. And, and our state has likewise seen this simultaneous growth and we're now an inbound state. We're attracting more people than we're losing. And so that's not the case with some of our neighbors. Our balance sheet is, is um, as strong as it's ever been. We have a record low unemployment and a record high employment. More people are now working in the state of Indiana than ever before in our over 200 year history. And so to have 1.8 billion in reserves, uh, to have a balanced, uh, honestly balanced budget, these are, these are um, um, attractive indicators that Indiana is a place of certainty and stability, predictability, continuity, with a real aspirational approach year after year after year. Well, you know, we, we are growing primarily in five key sectors, life sciences, um, IT, logistics and transportation, um, construction, and advanced manufacturing. And so you see a Cummins and a Lilly and a Zimmer Biomet pharmaceutical presence uh, that's Hoosier rooted here in France. And we have um, the same uh, type of investment in the state of Indiana. So there is a back and forth and we seek to, in terms of our aerospace and aviation industry, in terms of our auto industry and the whole supply chain that goes with that, in terms of life sciences, pharmaceuticals, we're the medical device capital of the world in the state of Indiana. And so we seek to further develop those relationships and strengthen those partnerships so that we both grow on both sides of the pond. Well, you mentioned the commander in chief and there's only one and there's uh, uh, the buck stops on his desk and you've got, uh, you've got governors all over the country uh, who like that certainty and security. They like the fair trade um, they uh, want to get to that as soon as we can. We want to be supportive of our national policy so that we get it right and it's locked in for long term. That's one of the, again one of the benefits of the state of Indiana. We have a you're able to plan long term because you can predict. You don't need a crystal ball, but you can predict the future. And those trade policies, once they are locked in, are going to be a huge asset for both for both trading partners. And so we have been. Uh, extremely um, helpful and encouraging to this administration um, to let's get it done and let's get it done right uh, because this is going to live on far beyond my term or or anyone that occupies office today. A 
Oh, it, it couldn't be um, overstated how important the transatlantic relationship is. In a, in a different life, I worked uh, in Lisbon, Portugal, worked and lived in Lisbon, Portugal for three years, worked for a NATO war headquarters. Um, and so I've long since known that bond. We've always been here. We've worked together. We've studied together. We fought together. Uh, this weekend, I'll end up going out to the American Cemetery in Normandy to pay tribute to some Hoosiers who never came home, gave their last full measure of devotion to our nation so that we could live on and uh, enjoy the liberty and freedom that we have. So this can't be overstated how important our past was, but how important this relationship is for our future. We will be stronger together. And it's, it's always been that way since uh, Marquis de Lafayette uh, helped um, secure our nation's freedom in the first place. Um, this, is, this is our time uh, to determine what our destiny, shared destiny will be. And that's why I'm so optimistic and excited for the future.